Hey, what's up guys? So I usually don't make these kinds of videos, but this is just so cool, I have to share it with you. Um, I was in an antique shop recently and buried away in, in the corner, I found this little wooden box here and I had no idea what it was. So I, I pulled it out, uh, pushed the little button on top here and the front cover pops out to reveal a voltmeter and it's from 1927. So, I mean, how cool is this? This is a general electric uh, millivolt meter uh, and you can see on the front here it was tested in 1928 so you just you just wonder what kind of equipment this thing uh, was used with what kind of equipment was verified and tested and checked out with this old meter so you know you kind of start to fantasize like was it part of a NASA program uh, was it used by a government contractor you know it's just like if only the meter could talk you just you just wonder uh, but sure enough, you know, it's probably just, you know, was used by some guy, you know, testing radio equipment, you know, and sat on a shelf somewhere for the last, you know, 90 years or whatever. So um, anyhow, I have not tested this yet. So do you think it'll work? Uh, let's let's put it to the test and see what happens. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the meter here. Uh, you can see we got a heavy duty leather strap up here at the top for carrying this thing around it's made of wood and um, it's actually quite heavy it must weigh like 10 or 15 pounds um, and then if we open it up we can see the terminals here uh, there's no batteries or anything for this meter it's uh, completely passive and it's just a standard DC uh, panel meter analog obviously so our input terminals are right here positive and negative um, and it's showing 0 to 500 amps, um, but the full scale voltage is uh, 200 millivolts, and it's got that uh, mark down there on the front there. And um, so obviously some kind of front end circuitry is needed to scale that down so that it reads 500 uh, amps. But anyhow, let's keep going here. I'll show you this little information tag here. Um, so it's showing, it's, it's showing that this is a general electric uh, direct current millivolt meter type DP2. Um, and it would be really cool to find some kind of service manual or something out there so that I know how to you know calibrate this thing or just some more information about it. Um, and then we've got some information here and it's almost like this is its calibration sticker. Resistance of 200 millivolt meter at 25 degrees C, 8.002 international ohms. So the coil impedance is 8.002 ohms, and we'll, we'll check that. Uh, and I guess you can have several different checks here, or like over the years, I guess you could, you know, check it and mark down what you measured, I guess. Um, and then it's tested March 8th, 1928. So the reason I think it's a 1927 meter though is because down here it looks like there's a date 21127 and then um, also in the serial number it's a 296127 so I think you know the year is in the serial number so I think it's a uh, 1927 meter but then tested in 1928 uh, by this guy who is in charge of testing and that's what it actually says on the meter which is kind of funny. So, um, okay, so it says it's uh, 8 ohms. So let's see. Let's see what we get on the ohm meter. Okay. Okay, there you have it. So 8.2 ohms. So that's good news. So that means at least, you know, we don't have a blown out coil or anything like that. Like somebody just hooked this up to, you know, some high current output power supply and smoked it. So we actually, oh, and it's funny if you watch the uh, the meter there as I use the ohm meter, the needle kind of raises a little bit there. So uh, that's a good sign. So now let's hook up the source measure unit to the meter and see if we get any movement on that needle and see if we can get the full scale reading out. So I've got the source measure unit set for 200 millivolts and I'm just gonna go ahead and let this thing rip. Oh, there we go, so that's good. Um, it's reading pretty close to full scale. You know, it'd be cool to take this meter to the same place that 
I have the source measure unit calibrated and see just see what they would say you know if they could it would be cool to get this thing fully caled out but anyway because I'm sure it's not holding its cal after you know 90 or so years okay anyway let's drop this down now to 100 millivolts okay there we have it so that's good and then let's try just a couple in-betweens there sweep it around yeah yeah it looks good so so that's good news um and one other thing i want to try so now we know it actually works so that's a huge relief otherwise i would have just bought basically a, a decoration to put on my desk so now i could actually do something with this um in fact what I could do is hook up my Arduino's PWM output to this and let's see what happens. Okay, so I've got an Arduino hooked up here and uh, I've got one of the PWM pins, uh, digital pin 3 hooked up to the meter here and it's just randomly selecting a value from like 0 to 75 um, because I did some tests to find out what would give me a full scale reading uh, on a PW amount and it's about 75. Um, so I'm sure the Arduino pin is not loving an 8 ohm load on its output so you know in my real project I'll have some kind of driver uh, for that but uh, anyway it is working so right now it's just randomly every you know 500 milliseconds or whatever uh, picking a new value and then driving that output pin so you can see it's able to drive the pin um, so that's kind of cool. So what what should I do with this meter now? You know, I'm thinking maybe and I've got some room inside this wooden box to put, you know, an ESP8266. So maybe this displays the weather or, you know, some kind of like temperature or humidity or, um, you know, just some statistic out there that might be useful for me. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, leave a comment in the description below. Uh, for a cool project and maybe I'll make a video showing how that all works. So anyway, just a different kind of video here. Um, thanks for watching.